Today, I'm gonna put this little thing on this big thing. Stick around. Welcome back to the Rivian Dad channel. Thank you so much for joining. We are back now from our road trip to California. It was really fun. We had a great time. It was a long road trip. Rosie did really well. The kids did really well. We made several videos about it, so please check those out if you haven't already. Uh, and by the way, if you find any of this content helpful, please take a minute to subscribe, share, like, leave a comment, and all of that stuff really, really does help. But now that we're back from our road trip, we can start focusing again on some of the content that we plan to, to release about the R1S and the R1T, which is just off the screen right there. Well, a couple of weeks back, I decided to try out the spare tire in the R1S. Now note the R1T has a full size spare, so that's pretty straightforward. The R1S spare tire is smaller uh, and it's deflated, although there is an air compressor on board. So it's a pretty genius system, but uh, a lot of people were curious how this works and uh, myself included, I hadn't tried it before, so I thought I'd give it a full try to see how it works. Well, uh, there were a couple surprises along the way, but I'd say it worked pretty well. So you'll see that coming up. One word about safety though, uh, I'm not using the scissor jack. I would normally use that if it were an emergency. It does work, I've used it before. I'm using a floor jack, which is a lot safer and a lot easier. Um, but if you're in a situation where you need to use the uh, emergency scissor jack, it will work, but please be careful. Note that I'm not a mechanic. Uh, I do have a lot of experience doing this, so just keep that in mind. But do your best to be safe and uh, stay out of harm's way. And let's get on to the show. Behind this lift gate and this little tailgate is a little compartment here where the spare tire lives. This compartment, you can just uh, pull it out and set it aside. And this piece pulls out as well. And down here is the spare tire. Now, I have not ever taken the spare tire out of here, so I'm gonna give it a shot right now. It's pretty straightforward because it's gonna be similar to uh, what it is in the R1T. Um, there's a section here of a piece that lifts out and then looks like the rest of the spare tire just lifts out. Something I wanna point out is this bit right here. You don't wanna try and pull the tire out over the top of that. You wanna actually use this little wrench here. You can see at the end of this, there's kind of a hex shaped wrench. That goes around that bit and allows you to loosen this piece here. There we go. And at that point, we should be able to lift the tire out. It's heavy, <laughs> and I am trying to do this with one hand because I have my other hand on the camera. Let me put it on the tripod again. Let's see what we think. This is max 50 miles per hour, which makes, makes sense, 80 kilometers an hour. Temporary use only. Refer to the owner's guide for tire inflation instructions. Let's do that. Okay, first of all, I wanna go into this interface here to change the setting so that I'm in tire change mode. Under vehicle service, so you start here, under settings, vehicle, and service, you have this item called tire change mode. Now it says, make sure you're in park, switch to your drive mode to off-road, all-terrain, and choose the highest ride height before changing your tire. Haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna go over here go to go, go off-road. It goes to a standard height for me, and I'm gonna switch that to highest. Now I can feel the truck going up, and I'm gonna wait for this little item here to show me that it is all the way at the highest setting. So I've turned on tire change mode under settings, vehicle service, tire change, and I've, I've set it into the highest ride, ride height setting. So I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna look in the manual now to see about inflating that tire. So I'm looking here in the manual now. Uh, there is information about changing a tire. There's quite a bit in here. It shows you how to uh, you know, get it out and, and uh, how to prep it and so on. And then here at the end, there's this great little sentence, number four, inflate the tire to the recommended pressure with the air compressor. That's all it tells me. But then I can click here, go to the air compressor, and it'll tell me a lot about how the air compressor works. Now, I already know a lot about how that works because of the truck. I've already used it um, many times. So the only thing I really need to know is what the tire pressure is set, and I'll look, I'll look on the tire for that. 
Now we have a bit of a problem here, which is that I'm looking on the tire and there's nothing obvious that says exactly how many PSI that this needs to be inflated to. It does say it's made in the Netherlands. It's kind of fun. So I can't see that information. And I've looked on both sides of the tire and it doesn't say anything here except for refer to the owner's guide. So let's go back to the owner's guide. And here under tires, tire pressure, it says check the inflation pressure of the tires, including the spare tire if equipped monthly with an accurate tire pressure gauge. The recommended cold inflation pressure are listed on the tire and loading information label on the driver's door pillar. So let's check that out. And here is the driver's door pillar. Spare tire, T19570R20, 42 kPa, 61 PSI. And let's make sure that that number matches. T19570, 20, 116 P, it does. So we need to go to 61 PSI. First of all, here we have our scissor jack and the proper lug wrenches and so on. Here we have a bit that you can use to put the scissor jack on that will help us get enough height. Now see, we have raised it up to a very high height. This is a good two fists worth of height above the wheel. So that's really nice and we'll, we'll uh, jack it up here in a second. And here we have the air compressor cable which has not been used yet. I haven't even taken it out of the package yet. And uh, you'll see it's just got two regular ends to the air compressor. Those fit into the air fittings. The other end goes into a piece that is in here. Let me find it for you. Okay, I take that back. That piece is in here. Now, this is what you need. This bit goes into uh, onto the t to the tire there, and this part goes into the air hose. Let me hook that up. So over here in the back, we have this compartment here where the air compressor is. It's pretty simple. We use the plus or minus sign to get to 61 PSI, and then we gotta pull this little lever back and attach that on, check it by pulling it tight, and then we'll set the other end and push play when we're ready. Now on the end of this valve here is a little cap which acts uh, as a regular cap but also on the other end of the valve has a little bit that you can use to deflate the tire again. This particular connector, do it the same way, attach it there and it goes straight in here and will latch on. So now we're all connected and ready to push play. And just so you know, you can hear the compressor pumping in the back. It's airing up the tire here. It's gonna keep going until it gets to 61. And then it will stop. Imagine this tire is gonna, oh, there it goes. Woo, that was kind of fun. Don't keep your fingers too close. truck it flashes numbers here to tell you kind of where you are in the process so I actually prefer that I'd like to know where I am in this uh, process of airing it up but unfortunately I don't have that option and I heard something pop over here Okay, so the presser, compressor stopped pumping. Got a couple other tools here I want to get to in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove this here and uh, check to see if it actually is at 60 PSI. And it's at 61 and a half, just as, we, just as we hoped. All right, now I'm a little concerned, but I'm gonna have to talk to Rivian Service about this, but it looks like, yep, the back of this tire the seam is, you know, a little bit different than the inside. No, not really. 
It's a little bit uneven. There's a little more side on a little more of this round part on this side on the inside than on the outside but i suppose that's okay we're going to put this on go for a little drive to make sure it works okay <laughs> Now, there are a couple of things that have extra pieces that I have here. One is a little screwdriver <laughs> that I'm going to use to take off the tow hook or the uh, cover for the tow point right here underneath. So, here we go. Just pull it out. So, make sure you have a screwdriver with you in your car. And there's the little hole where you'll use to uh, put the jack stand in, put the jack in. All right, so in here we have our lug wrench and the uh, piece that will, um, that you would use to uh, use the scissor jack. For right now, I'm just gonna use this other jack and, but first I want to do something. I want to loosen these just enough to where I can get this tire off once it's off the ground. <sighs> Keep in mind, consult your local professional for this if you're not comfortable doing this. Of course, I'm gonna take a quick look at the tire on both sides to make sure there's nothing of concern. It looks fine. And likewise, I'm gonna check in here to make sure there's nothing to be concerned about. Let me get some close-ups of that. Here is the inside of the wheel well. Pretty beefy shock system here. Really beautiful, nice and clean. Nice, huge brake caliper here with a very big brake drum and this is one of the reasons that Rivian hasn't uh, built a less than 20 inch wheel because it's hard to get it around this big brake caliper. So everything in here looks good. We'll put on the spare we'll go for a little drive. And for this process I'm just going to reverse what I did before. Hopefully I'm up high enough. Before I go anywhere, I want to make sure I attach this thing on here. You can see there are little, two little slots on one side, which correspond to the two slots over here. So, put this in first, and then find those two little bits there. There we go. That's easy enough. like it kind of drives as normal everything feels fine I mean obviously I wouldn't go fast in this but uh, you know 27 miles an hour not too bad feels okay so totally doable as a spare tire let's go back and see if we can get it back in its little spot Now I'm realizing the genius of having this little piece here that I can just pull off and flip over. Now one thing to note here is that this particular device is a little bit like a reverse screwdriver and you can go in here and you can remove the core here which is going to let you deflate this tire a lot faster and do it very slowly. Now remember once you take this out you got to put it back in. There it goes.
Wow, some serious engineering design there. Now that was pretty impressive. It basically went back to the exact size and shape it was before we started this whole process. Pretty cool. I wasn't sure if it was gonna deflate all the way back in that shape, but sure enough, it did. So it's ready to go back where it was. Don't forget though, put this core back in and you do it basically by screwing this little thing back in here until it's uh, snug. It is not light, but it's doable. And there you go, fits. And I'll put the top bits in as well, get a shot of that at the end, but I just wanna say, I am very impressed. This works really well. It gives me a lot of peace of mind knowing that this whole process is doable um, in, with just the tools that I have on board. And this spare tire is pretty impressive. It does go back down to its size and it fits in there just fine. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please leave any comments below. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you in the next one.